This is the Onyx Book Sleeve 2 and it might be the best e-reader Onyx Books has released so far. But it's not free of issues. I'll be showing you its highlights and I'm also pointing out its weaknesses in this in-depth review. Let's start by having a look at the design and build quality. The Onyx Book Sleeve 2 has an asymmetrical design with page turn buttons and positions itself as a direct competitor to the likes of Kindle Oasis, Kobo Libra 2 and Pocketbook Era. Make sure to subscribe to not miss my comparison videos with those devices. There are two color versions available, black and white. And those are not just different in color, but also in design because the white one has a sunken display as Onyx is calling it. So the screen is recessed into the body. And the black version I have here has a flush front. I think it's great that Onyx offers both versions because as we all know, tastes are different. Some prefer the flush front, others the recessed screen. Objectively, the recessed screen usually offers a tiny bit more clarity because there is no extra layer on top of the screen. However, the difference usually is pretty small. So if you're not especially sensitive to it, you won't notice the difference and I wouldn't think too much about it and go with the option you find more appealing aesthetically. Another difference between the two color versions is the weight. With 185 grams, the black model is significantly heavier than the white one with 170 grams. Doesn't sound like much, but in direct comparison, that's definitely noticeable. Having said that, the black version is one of the lightest 7-inch e-readers on the market, so it's also quite easy to handle. For comparison, the Kindle Oasis weighs 188 grams. Both color versions have capacitive touchscreens, which means you operate the user interface with your fingers. There is no support for a Wacom stylus for handwritten note-taking, like on the larger books models. Handling the Onyx Books Lift 2 is generally a pretty pleasant experience. Thanks to the thin design, low weight and wide enough grip, it's easy to hold and never becomes inconvenient during normal use. The frame around the device is made out of plastic, but almost looks like aluminum the way it is designed. Together with the overall great build quality, it gives the Onyx Books Lift 2 a high-end feel. On the side of the grip, you have the USB-C connector, the speaker grill, the microphone and the microSD card slot, which Onyx calls TF, short for Trans Flash. That was actually the original name for the microSD card, which isn't in use anymore. Nonetheless, you can use it, of course, with regular up-to-date microSD cards to expand the internal 32 gigs internal storage, of which around 20 gigs are available to the user. That's obviously far less, but still plenty to not run into any issues, especially when having the microSD option. I tested the microSD card expansion with the 256 gigs card and had no issues. And just as a side note, Onyx actually listed the Booksleaf 2 at the announcement with having stereo speakers, which it doesn't have. Not that it matters much, because I guess most people won't miss them, but it's still worth mentioning for those who looked forward to them. Onyx fixed the specs sheet after some time, so it's now correct. The two physical page turn buttons are positioned a bit to the side, which also works great ergonomically. You can rest your thumb on the bezel and simply push a button by adjusting your thumb a little bit. This design is minimizing the risk of accidental presses. The pressure levels of the buttons are also nice and pretty even. Not as perfect as on the Kindle Oasis, but pretty close and better than the mentioned competition from Kobo and Pocketbook. Okay, so after having braced the build and haptics, let's also talk about what I don't like. One, the buttons are too close together. Yes, it's definitely a matter of habit. And for the most part, I became used to it after a few days. But because the buttons are basically seamlessly close together with the ability to press them on the edges as well, it sometimes results in accidental presses. Even though the more sideways positioning mentioned before reduces that in another respect. Two, the backside is made out of plastic and also feels good to the touch but it's a gigantic fingerprint magnet. Maybe it's just my hands, I don't know. I can pretty much see every tab, which can look nasty pretty quickly. I suspect the white model is a little more forgiving in that area. Three, at least on the black model, there's a plastic frame around the bezel on the front, which is pretty susceptible to wear. In the last couple of weeks, I have been using the Onyx Books Lift 2 and I haven't been especially rough with it, but was not particularly careful either. 
I just used it like any other device. Nonetheless, the plastic frame already shows tiny abrasions in the corners. It's not too bad as of yet, but because it's visible only after a few weeks, I suspect it will look worse in a few months. And four, the default orientation of the Onyx Book Sleeve 2 is with the grip on the left side. That orientation makes sense for note-taking devices because most people write with the right hand. But it doesn't make sense for an e-reader without handwriting capabilities in my opinion because most people will hold the device in the right hand. Why does it matter you might say? Simply rotate the e-reader and be done with it. Sure, you can do that and let the device automatically rotate the contents of the screen thanks to the orientation sensor. What you can change though is the position of the power button which is located on the top left side of the frame when holding the book sleeve tool in the left hand. That means rotating it to hold it in the right hand will put the power button on the bottom right side of the frame, which I find pretty inconvenient. It's not only questionable ergonomically, but also a potential issue when standing up the device and pressing it down too hard, so the button is triggered. In my opinion, Kobo has found the best position for a power button on the back side of an e-reader. That way, device orientation doesn't matter and it's never in the way. Okay, let's have a look at the display. The Onyx Book Sleeve 2 is using an e-ink cutter screen with a resolution of 300 ppi. So it's super sharp as you'd expect from a modern high-end e-reader. What's a bit strange though is Onyx communication of the exact e-ink technology in use. In the Q&A section on their website, they can't guarantee a Carta 1200 screen, but confirm it's using the latest screen technology. So to be honest, I'm not sure what to make of it. Latest doesn't mean best, and Carta 1200 is, at the moment, the best e-paper technology we have seen so far. But putting technicalities aside, the Onyx Book Sleeve 2 has great contrast levels and offers a great readability. Contrast is not as good as on the Kobo Libra 2 or Kindle Paperwhite, but very close. You can only see the difference in direct comparison. On its own, I'd say all three are essentially the same. The Book Sleeve 2 obviously also has a built-in front light with color temperature adjustment. The light color can be changed from between 3300 Kelvin to 7900 Kelvin and pretty much anything in between since you can mix both LED colors. But keep in mind, those values are usually a bit different from device to device, even inside the same line. The lights can be set very bright and also pretty low, so turning them up is useful even in a very well lit room and you can lower brightness in the dark enough to not get blinded. Lighting quality is good, but again, not on the same very high level as the competition from Kindle or Kobo. I'd say it's pretty similar to the Pocketbook era, which means there is a brightness gradient visible from left to right. How pronounced it is depends on the light setting. When setting the brightness level adequately to your surrounding, which means not too bright, you won't really notice it. Only when turning the dial all the way up, the gradient becomes more obvious and possibly distracting, depending on how sensitive you are to such things. But overall, I'm very pleased with the screen quality of the Book Sleeve 2. It's not perfect, but solid and offers great usability. Let's talk about the software. Like all current Onyx books, e-readers and tablets, the Leaf 2 also uses an open and customized version of Android 11. It's not the most up-to-date version of Android, but modern enough so you shouldn't have any issues with running pretty much any app that's suitable for the ink screen for quite some time. There are three options to install apps, where the inbuilt Onyx Books App Store, the Google Play Store, or by sideloading them. I personally am sticking with the sideloading option because neither the Books App Store nor the Google Play Store seem like great options to me. Let me explain. The Books App Store includes around 35 hand-picked apps and doesn't require you to log in. You can simply download an app with a tab, which is great. What isn't so great is the disclaimer when opening the store for the first time, which says we do not verify the integrity and safety of the provided apps. And a bit more, so if the provider isn't willing to verify the integrity of the provided apps, I'm not sure if I want to use any of those apps. Besides, it's only a few hand-picked apps, so the more interesting option is enabling Google Play anyway. You can do that in the app management settings, after which you can sign in and use the e-reader like any smartphone or tablet. Installing and updating apps is as easy as it can get, 
and you have the regular Google app selection. So that's clearly the better option than the native books app store in my opinion. But now I have another issue because the e-reader is calling home even when not using any Onyx book services or having the automatic firmware update check enabled. So what do I mean by that? All smart devices are connecting to servers on the internet on a regular basis. Your phone or tablet do this pretty much all the time and other e-readers are usually no exception. I checked the network connections with Wireshark and there is a lot of communicating to various US servers in Mountain View going on, so most likely that's Google. But I also log connections to China, which shouldn't be happening since I didn't use any Onyx book services and have automatic firmware update detection disabled. There's really no reason to connect to any third-party services at all in my opinion. But to be fair, when first starting up the device, you have to agree to the privacy policy. Onyx states that they adhere to the GDPR, which is the data privacy protection law in the EU. The privacy policy now also includes the information on the appointed data controller representative in Spain, which wasn't the case a couple of weeks ago when I reviewed other books devices, if I'm not mistaken. So that definitely makes me feel a little better when using the device. But to be honest, I'm still not using sensitive data on it, as long as those connections are happening. So depending on what you're aiming to do with the e-reader, keep this in mind. Using a VPN firewall like NetGuard seems to do the trick to block this unwanted traffic. So this could be a good workaround for anyone as paranoid as I am. In that case, I'd recommend updating to the latest firmware, which fixes the crashing keyboard app we saw in the unboxing video, and then only whitelist apps you are actively using. I'm planning to do a follow-up video on how to set this up, so don't forget to subscribe to not miss that. Most Android apps are obviously not optimized for the black and white and rather slow ink screen. Nonetheless, many do work without major issues. However, there are two situations that can be a problem. Animations and low contrast colors in an app. In both cases, apps might not function as expected, but Onyx included custom ink modes that in most cases fix any issues. You have four different ink modes available, with HD being the default best quality mode. The three other modes allow for a faster screen refresh, but also reduce text and image quality and, depending on the mode, introduce a lot more ghosting than usual. I personally use the HD mode 99% of the time because I feel it's perfectly fine for pretty much anything I am doing on the e-reader. Besides those refresh modes, there are also some app optimization options available. You can adjust dark and light colors, change resolution, font rendering, and a few other options. All of those settings are app dependent, so you can adjust them for specific apps. Thanks to these options, you can basically get any app to work. It's not perfect all of the time, but better than on any other ink device. Let's have a look at three specific use cases I was asked about after my unboxing video. The Kindle app, the Google keyboard with swiping, and the Patreon buttons in third-party apps. As I mentioned, you can install Android apps, which also include the Kindle app, of course. It's the same app that you'd use on your phone and works a bit differently than on a dedicated Kindle e-reader. So as a result, using the app on the Onyx Book Sleeve 2 will also be a bit different than when using a Kindle e-reader. Having said that, usability is still very good. You can log into your Amazon account and simply start reading your ebooks and also buy and download new ones. That works without any problems. One thing is annoying though. The page slide animation on a page turn can't be disabled. So every time you tap the screen, you will see that sliding effect. You can use another ink mode, which helps a bit to reduce the effect, but you can't get rid of it completely when using the touch screen, which directly brings us to the next question. When using the physical page turn buttons of the book sleeve 2, the page slide animation in the Kindle app isn't showing. You can use the buttons in pretty much any app you like because the book software allows you to reassign them to be used as volume keys. And any app that allows you to bind the volume keys should work fine with the hardware buttons. And let's also have a look at the virtual keyboard options. The book software allows you to change the virtual QWERTY keyboard, which to be honest, I never saw the need to do because the stock keyboard is designed quite well. However, as you might've seen in my unboxing video, the keyboard had a problem at market launch of the book sleeve 2 and was forced closing sometimes. That issue was resolved with one of the software updates. Another reason why you might want to change the default keyboard is because you want to type a lot. So a swiping keyboard would be the better option. 
the Google Keyboard is one of those that allows you to have swiping enabled. I was pleasantly surprised at how well that works on the ink screen overall. Just two things to keep in mind here. You'd need to adapt the default theme to see the suggestions at the top of the keyboard. Otherwise, it's just a black bar and you can't see anything in it. And there's a bit of flashing happening with the swiping trail. But luckily, there's an easy fix for that by just disabling it. So that's certainly a viable option to use on the BookSleeve 2 if you intend to do a lot of writing and typing on the device. Another option would be to use an external Bluetooth keyboard. But of course, that's clunkier than simply using the UI options. The BookSleeve 2 has a quad-core CPU and 2 gigs of RAM. That's the same amount of RAM as on the previous model, but only half the cores. And although Onyx used a less powerful CPU for the BookSleeve 2, there's really not much to complain about in terms of performance. While some apps may take a second or two to launch, the user interface feels snappy overall, and most regular apps work without any noticeable performance issues. The 2000 mAh battery is doing a good job, but depending on how extensively you make use of the Android expandability options, it can drain pretty quickly as well. For example, by using performance-hungry apps in a high refresh display mode or watching a YouTube video, I managed to drain the battery by more than 1% every minute. But using it as an ebook reader, battery life is pretty normal and not really standing out of the crowd, despite running Android 11. Coming from other brands, one thing to get used to is how fast the books lift to powers off completely when not in use. That's 15 minutes on default, which is quite short and most likely was chosen to prevent battery drain when having apps installed. I changed that to two days. So even after skipping a day of reading, I can still pick up the e-reader, wake it from standby instantly and don't have to wait for the boot process to finish. In 24 hours of being in standby, the e-reader typically only lost around 2% of charge. So it looks like Onyx optimized the operating system quite nicely and the short default setting for it to power off is either a leftover of older devices or a precautionary measure for users who are using many apps, which can mess with the Android hibernation mode. General usability of the user interface is good, but to be honest, I have three minor issues with it. The first issue is the pretty steep learning curve in using the device. It's not super complicated to use, but there are so many options that it can take time getting the hang of everything. That some translations are a bit lacking isn't helping either. The second thing I don't like is how Onyx simply shrunk some UI elements on the latest firmware. The new control center is definitely better organized than it was on older firmwares, but text and icons are too small in my opinion. And it looks like they designed it for the 10 inch tablets and shrunk them to fit the smaller seven inch screen. They should have just combined the control center and notifications in one area, same as before, adjusted for the full width of the screen and sorting the toggles accordingly. That would have worked much better on the 7-inch screen than what they implemented here, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, it's working fine as it is and is great on a larger screen, but there's clearly room for improvement on the 7-inch display. The third issue is not really a problem, more like a very small inconvenience. The default orientation I already mentioned is with the grip on the left side. When the e-reader fully shuts down either manually or automatically, the screen orientation reverts back to the default view. Meaning, even if you're using the device by holding the grip in the right hand all the time, the sleep image and boot animation will be the other way around. As I said, it's barely an inconvenience, but is somewhat still annoying me after a couple of weeks of use. Maybe I'm just too nitpicky here. The library is also clearly arranged with a few different options to filter and sort books on the device. Inside the book, you have a lot of options to customize text stylings, including font size, font weight, anti-aliasing, font family, word spacing, line spacing, paragraph spacing, and page margins. And that's not even all of them, because there are some other options which allow for even more adjustments. Onyx also tidied up the layout and moved some settings to a third tab, which wasn't the case before. You can create notes with the virtual QWERTY keyboard after selecting text and just pin the note to that selection. Dictionary function takes a bit more work to make it usable, because first you have to manually download and install the dictionaries, which is not possible anymore from within the app. 
which isn't a big loss, to be honest, because the selection on all the devices was rather limited to begin with. But that means you need to sideload compatible dictionaries yourself, or you use the online translation services from Bing or Google, or look up explanations on the dictionary or another online resource you can add yourself. All of those options are available with a few clicks from within the reading app. And also worth mentioning is the awesome text-to-speech option, which works out of the box with Google Speech Synthesis. That means you can automatically convert the ebook text you're reading to audio, to which you can either listen using the built-in speaker or with compatible Bluetooth speakers or headphones. The current position is highlighted, which can be helpful if you have a visual impairment, are learning how to read, or if you simply want to listen to a book while you're doing something else. It's obviously not as great as an audiobook, but a useful addition if needed. The PDF we on Onyx Books devices is hands down the best you can get on any e-ink device. Even on the small 7-inch Leaf 2 display, the available options help tremendously in reading even large PDFs. Thanks to the high resolution of 300 ppi, you can read large format PDF files fully zoomed out. That's obviously not something you'd do to read the whole document, but it's great to get a quick overview and then zoom in on the desired position. The viewing modes include a comics and a columns mode. Both switch through parts of the zoomed in page in a preset order, so you don't need to move the viewing port around manually. Those modes work extremely well and are super useful with navigating a PDF file on the 7 inch screen. Responsiveness is also very good thanks to a quad core CPU and 2 gigs of RAM, so even large and complex PDF files can be opened without any problems. The inbuilt ebook store, on the other hand, is not something I'd rely on for getting books, because it's basically just a collection of free public domain titles and doesn't include contemporary literature. So to get the books you like, you will either need to sideload them or use the Android app of the bookseller of your choice. The Books Lift 2 is my favorite Onyx e-reader at the moment. It's compact, lightweight, has great contrast levels, awesome expandability options, and physical page turn buttons. With a price of $200 US, it's also reasonably priced. So what's the catch? Well, there is the potential data privacy issue and some minor things with the abrasions on the frame, button design, and not so perfect lighting quality. The last one is, in my opinion, the biggest disadvantage when comparing it to the competition from Kindle or Kobo. It's not bad, but just not on the same very high level as the other two. So all in all, the Onyx Books Lift 2 is a very capable e-reader with only a few downsides and many advantages. If you're looking for an open Android e-reader, you definitely should take the Lift 2 into consideration. Let us know what you think about the Books Lift 2 in the comments below. Also make sure to check out this video here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for your time watching and see you in the next one.